at a theater hall in Italy, a captivating performance is underway. The audience is transfixed. They are watching a live relay of a complex surgical procedure that is being conducted at an adjacent hospital. Doctors are removing a tumor from a patient's large intestine. In a similar procedure, all eyes are on a Japanese physician. The endoscope he's using is also Japanese. It magnifies over a hundred times the tissue surrounding the tumor. The device allows the surgeon to remove the tumor by performing highly precise electrosurgery. The procedure to remove the five centimeter mass from the patient's intestinal wall takes only 40 minutes. I finished my, my uh, resection, but a patient had antibiotics. Yes, yes, yes. Day in and day out, this technology helps us deal immediately with a patient's condition. The quality of the optics is exceptional. So this technology is almost exclusively Japanese. Europe remains far behind in this field. Japan leads the way in endoscopic technology, and Olympus is at the forefront in this field. The company was the first to develop a gastric camera in 1950. It featured a six centimeter film camera installed at the distal end of a flexible tube. The device was developed with the help of doctors at the University of Tokyo. And it revolutionized the diagnosis of stomach cancer. Olympus went on to develop fiberscopes and later videoscopes, contributing greatly to the development of patient-friendly endoscopic therapy. The latest models can magnify tissue to an unbelievable level, allowing doctors to observe and diagnose tumors with extreme precision. The tumor ends here. From here on, the cells are normal. Our philosophy has always been to work closely with the doctors in developing our products. That's our X factor. In this edition of JTEC, we focus inward as we explore the development of this revolutionary, life-saving technology. Carpentier. Welcome to the program. From the time of Hippocrates in ancient Greece, it had been a long-standing dream to be able to look inside a living human body for medical diagnosis and treatment. But it wasn't until the 19th century that European doctors attempted to observe the inside of a human stomach. Physicians thought that if a human being could swallow a sword and survive the trick, Certainly, a tube could be safely inserted down into the stomach cavity in much the same way as a sword. So they developed a device called a gastroscope. It was a rudimentary tool made of an iron pipe with mirrors at either end. However, it proved to be extremely dangerous and often caused fatal injury to the patient. The first functional endoscope was developed in Japan in 1950. Japanese doctors and optics manufacturer Olympus teamed up to be the first to photograph the inside of an organ of a living human. They called their device the gastro camera. Olympus went on to develop an array of endoscopes that are used in hospitals and clinics all around the world. The company is the global leader in this field and commands a 70% share of the world market for gastrointestinal endoscopes. Let's take a close look at some of the devices Olympus has produced over the years. Follow me as we pay a visit to the company's own museum of medical technology.
Olympus's research center is located in Hachioji on the outskirts of Tokyo. It also houses a museum that showcases the company's products developed over nearly a hundred years of history. Mr. Ozawa. Hi. Nice to Mark. meet you. Nice to meet you. Thank you for greeting us. Guiding us today is Takeshi Ozawa from the company's business division. On display here are countless devices developed by Olympus since its founding in 1919. At the time, Japan was eager to manufacture its own microscopes, and the company was founded for this purpose. The first model it produced was very well received, thanks in part to its high level of optical accuracy. Olympus even received orders from abroad. Emboldened by the success of its microscopes, the company began producing cameras in 1936. Several of its models offered features that revolutionized consumer photography. In 1959, the launch of the Olympus Pen model started a worldwide craze for half-frame cameras. The combination of high performance and a compact body made Olympus cameras a popular choice for shutterbugs. Um, this is the, you know, the first gastric camera. This is the very first? Yes. A miniature camera fitted at the business end of the tube allowed doctors to take pictures inside a patient's stomach. Today, you know, we have a replica of this, you know, first gastric camera. Oh, please show me. Yes, this way. I was given a rare chance to handle this piece from the past and see how it worked. Oh, thank you very much. Yes. Ooh, this is a little, a little bit heavy at the, at this end. Of course, the control mechanism, and the camera lens would be. Lens is right there. here. Yes. I see. Oh yes. So that was quite a feat to be able to make something so tiny yeah. and so compact back in 1949. Yeah. You can see, you know, two dials basically. Ah yes. And then this is for, you know, film winding. I see. And the other is for angle. Oh, the angle. So yes. the camera could be angle. Oh, that Tilted. is interesting. Yes. Oh, yes. So it, it does pivot. Yes. Let's take a closer look at the structure of the camera. It's made of three parts. To the left is the lens and dark chamber. The central component houses the light bulb, and in the tip is the film magazine. A button at the top of the control unit triggers the flash to take a picture. In 1966, Olympus developed a fiber scope. It uses an optic fiber attached to a viewfinder. It allows doctors to see inside the stomach of a patient in real time before taking a picture, greatly improving the speed and accuracy of a diagnosis. In 1985, advances in digital technology led to the introduction of CCD image sensors small enough to fit inside the tip of an endoscope. Called a videoscope, its CCD captures light coming through the lens and relays real-time video images to a TV monitor. This technology means several physicians at once can observe an examination procedure. This is the latest video chronoscope with high definition TV. To understand the magnification power of Olympus's flagship device, we're going to train it on the surface of a 1,000 yen banknote. I see. Look at the detail in this picture. 3D. Okay, so next, you know, let's try the MBI. Okay. Narrow band imaging relies on a specific wavelength to highlight blood vessels. Oh, now, oh. yes, this is the, you know, the conventional white light mode. Uh -huh. So this is a, you know, sample. Right which uh, demonstrate the, you know, the vessel patterns. But once you hit this bottom, 
Oh my goodness. Yeah, this now, is... there are many other vessels that I did not see yeah. before switching MBI. the MBI mode on. Yes. Mm. So these, you know, tiny vessels, it's basically at the very surface mm. of the mucosa. Uh, the They're capillaries. Capillaries, uh, yes. And then these are the kind of a sample of the you know, suspicious area. And basically, you know, these you know, early polyps have uh, unusual you know, capillary patterns. So that's why with you know, MBI mode, physician can recognize these you know, tiny vessel patterns. And relatively easier, they can detect these regions. So how did the world's first gastro camera come to be developed? Actually, it started with a Japanese surgeon in 1949. Japan was a devastated country at the end of World War II, and it was aiming to rebuild. At the time, the three biggest causes of mortality in the country were tuberculosis, stroke, and cancer. At the end of the war, a surgeon working at Tokyo University Hospital saw on a daily basis patients complaining of stomach pains. Many of them were suffering of stomach cancer, so advanced that it was too late for surgery. The surgeon thought that if he could visually examine the inside of a patient's stomach, he could detect cancer at an earlier stage and save more lives. The surgeon was Tatsuo Uji. He wondered if it was possible to photograph the inside of the stomach. In July 1949, Dr. Uji visited Olympus and asked the company to help him develop a gastric camera. He was introduced to a young and promising engineer. Mutsuo Sugiura had joined Olympus in 1938. His specialty was designing cameras. Dr. Uji pitched his idea to Sugiura. He said he needed a camera that could fit inside the stomachs of his patients. Impressed by the doctor's enthusiasm, Sugiura agreed to take on the challenge. He requested the assistance of a junior staff member whose name is Toshio Nakatsubo. Mr. Sugiura was immediately interested in the project. The problem was getting the green light because his supervisor apparently thought the idea was unrealistic. So, Mr. Sugiura told his boss that a camera requires only three things, film, light, and a lens. We only need to put them together. Whether the camera is big or small and what it's supposed to shoot are secondary matters. Sugiura convinced his boss and got permission to start the project. After the war, Olympus was looking to expand its horizons. Up until then, the company had focused on making cameras and microscopes. But we knew that if we were going to survive in the new era, we needed to come up with a new kind of product and start a new business. A joint research team was established, bringing together Olympus engineers and physicians from the University of Tokyo. Dr. Uji drew up a list of requirements for the gas. 